Hi, I'm Luis. I'm going to present about um, Shutter Network, um, which is a malicious um, MEV and front-running protection mechanism, essentially. Most of you maybe here or watching um, online might be um, familiar with the problem of MEV, which is, uh, stands for uh, minor or maximal um, extractable value. Um, it's, it's essentially the revenue that a block producer can extract via front-running, injecting, and reordering transactions. Um, and it's an, an emerging issue that um, now commands up to $50 million um, dollar, um, sort of per, per month um, on, just on Ethereum alone, and it's also applicable to all other um, public blockchains. Um, so um, as a very simple example, just to go through this, is, a, is, a front, is front running. And front running is the practice of someone um, getting a transaction executed before some, um, someone else and essentially um, being able to uh, buy, for example, buy cheaper and then even sell more expensive to the, to the victim afterwards by having some information advantage or having, being able to get your um, transaction executed before. Um, the victim then suffers from, from higher price and, and potentially a failed transaction. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's sort of a simple, simple example, but there's much, much more complicated um, arbitration techniques and things like this. Um, why, why should we care about this? So um, generally speaking, um, the, the problem isn't really arbitrage. That, that's, a, that's generally considered a good thing. You want to ha uh, equalize prices on on DEXs and everything, um, and so there's a large portion of MEV that we, we considered um, non-malicious. Um, but what we can probably agree on, generally speaking, is that front-running is, is malicious. And then, um, just generally speaking, the way how MEV is <coughs> extracted um, and, and potential mon uh, monopolies forming around um, the extraction of MEV, that's, that's would be considered malicious. Um, and, um, and that's the focus. That's our problem that we're focusing on. That, that's what we want to um, solve. Um, so yeah, this, this more concretely, worse prices, fair transactions. Yeah. And then um, one, one uh, more specific case is, is layer 2 MEV. So generally speaking, people don't think about layer 2 MEV um, yet so much because um, it's not uh, apparent because generally we're trusting the, the roll-up sequencers to not, not to extract MEV because yeah, there are big teams and they, they have something to lose if they would... Uh, so front run their own um, users, um, but that's not an optimal case. You don't want to trust your operator. That's not it's not, a tr it's not how we do it in blockchain essentially. So so MEV does also exist in, in rollups and, and is, is might even become an even larger issue um, than um, than on L1 because the rollup sequences are more sophisticated um, and, and more centralized. And these are just some 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 pictures. Probably you guys have seen um, some of these on on Twitter and others. Um, uh, very sophisticated arbitrage, um, or, or very um, people making two million dollars uh, per per arbitrage. Yeah, just to yeah. So that that was just sort of explaining the the problem of of MEV and, and maybe also in, um, uh, layer two, and um, and now we come to what we are building our solution, which is generally speaking is we're using threshold encryption and a DKG distributed key generation to um, combat front running. Um, on a very high level, it uh, works uh, in a way that transactions are encrypted um, and signed by the block producer while they're still encrypted, um, so that the, the block neither the block producer nor anyone else can can see what's in the transaction, so they can also not front run or censor. Um, and then, and then the the issue with this, or if you were to um, trivially do this with your own private key, encrypt your transaction with your own private key. Um, that would lead to uh, a free option for the users not to decrypt um, afterwards, um, which we want to prevent. So the whole system is a little more uh, complicated. Um, that's why we use threshold encryption and we use these keeper systems. So think about sort of a keeper, um, uh, 50 to 200 um, crypto node providers that collaborate and run these, um, the threshold encryption mechanism, DKG, collaborate to generate the the uh, encryption key, which the users are using to encrypt, and then the block producer um, or collator, we call him, um, uh, signs um, the, the block, finalizes the order of transactions basically, and then afterwards the keepers collaborate again to release the decryption key. Um, 
and that's why the, we ensure that the transaction is actually ex executed. Um, so we, we solve this free option via um, threshold encryption. And here's another sort of look at this. Um, very simply speaking, is the, these keepers on the left, at our lower left side, they collaborate, and then the, on the top, uh, the, the transaction can pass through this metaphorical um, dark forest. Um, and then we are implementing Shutter. So um, there's sort of the first iteration we finished um, mid of last year. We um, built it as a smart contract uh, system, which we call Onshade Shutter. Um, it, it can protect any any one or multiple smart contracts from front running, but it has some sort of uh, downsides that I don't want to get into, go into. But essentially, which we which is why we um, switched our focus to something called rolling shutter, which is the same mechanism expla uh, explained before, but implemented at the roll-up level, at the sequencer level, um, so that the shutter is integrated into the roll-up, making the entire um, roll-up um, MEV or malicious MEV protected and censorship resistant. Um, and I will go into more detail on this. But just to say, um, on the other two, two other efforts we're also um, sort of pursuing on, on the side is um, we made a proposal to um, an ETH research forum to um, propose to implement this mechanism into, into the actual beacon chain, into the Ethereum 2.0, um, which is a, but it's, it's a longer discussion. That's going to that's, that's require discussion. We're going to require sort of experimenting. Um, people want, probably want to first see how, it's, how, people, how the roll-ups are experimenting with this and whether it works on that level. And then we have uh, another thing um, that uses the same um, DKG threshold encryption mechanism, but not to combat MEV, but rather to um, encrypt DAO votes um, and to make DAO voting more fair. And we're working with Snapshot on this. Um, there was an overview about what we're working on, and now sort of going deeper into, into the each of the um, these uh, um, things is, is rolling shutter is again is, is uh, sort of implemented into the rollup shutter implemented into the rollup, um, and uh, it's, it makes it ideally makes it possible to um, maintain a long-term centralized operator, um, a rollup operator, um, without all these negative side effects that we, we would see with a centralized operator. So currently, if you have a centralized operator, again they can extract MEV, they can censor. And then with Shutter, hopefully these side effects go away. And then to quote um, John Wang from, from Immutable uh, Saber, we, he says, uh, the roll-ups with the um, best MEV mitigation mechanisms will have an edge. So I think we think this could be a value add for any roll-up. Um, so yeah, and we're, we're exploring and, and talking to a bunch of uh, optimistic roll-ups so far and see how this goes. Um, again, this is the shutterized uh, beacon chain. I do, I'm not going to say a lot about this, but it's yeah, the same mechanism, but proposed to implement at the L1 level. It's going to be more more sophisticated. Yeah, but feel free to look into this or comment. We love love feedback on this. Um, yes, and then shutter governance is is uh, what I talked about. Is this encrypting um, DAO votes? Um, so essentially, the 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 there might be some um, misbehaviors that that um, people in DAO votes uh, in DAO voting are experiencing. So, one one simple example would be if a large whale can um, sway the, the the vote last minute um, because they will see how many votes they need to uh, sort of uh, um, buy or, or borrow to to they, 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 they know exactly how many votes they can they need to to sway the vote last minute. Something we see see quite a lot, and then so the idea would be if we were to shield the voting, if we had encrypted votes um, that would uh, prevent them, deter them from even trying trying to do so, and some and there's some other um, sort of game theoretical behaviors that that we will ho hopefully um, improve with this encrypted um, voting, and yeah, so it's a commit and reveal scheme, um, and we're working um, mostly with snapshot to to integrate it directly into snapshot, so any any DAO can then. Uh, any, any snapshot uh, DAO can then can then access it um, quite soon, and then also Claros. Claros is a you guys should be familiar with this. It's a it's a court system, arbitrage system, and they sort of their game theory benefits from um, having the again having the votes be shielded. Um, so they could also benefit from this. And in some early talks with them. Um, this is just a small thing. My colleague uh, Yannick built this. It's a, uh, it's a game, as a DAO to DAO game based on um, 
based on Shutter. So it's a diplomacy um, implementation, but uh, DAOs are collaborating and DAOs are collaborating with the other to fight other DAOs. But it uses Shutter to um, encrypt game moves so, so that the, the game moves aren't um, uh, observable by the other DAOs before they even execute it. And then this is just a, uh, just a small um, announcement, or not announcement, but just want to do some advertisement for this um, larger event um, at, um, at, in the context of DevConnect uh, in, in three weeks, I think, is this um, MEV day, which is a full day of exploring all kinds of um, MEV-related topics, um, and we co-organize with Flashbots and um, CowSwap on this, so do you guys want to attend there would encourage to apply. So yes, you have to apply to it essentially. Yeah. So yeah, again, um, we, our goal overall is to partner with um, especially those who need uh, anti-MEV solutions or anti-front running solutions. Um, or if we're talking about the shutter government and other things like this, um, UX friendly commit and reveal schemes. So yeah, love if you um, like follow us on Twitter or contact me afterwards. Yep. Thank you. Is it <coughs> uh, yeah, yeah, so, so we, uh, we already take questions from the audience, so if anyone has anything to ask, we can give you the mic. Any questions so far? Well, uh, probably I've got the question, like, uh, where exactly I work in, like, like I work in prod already, and with which chains? Is possible to in, like, see your benefits. So the, this first effort, um, what I call on-chain shutter, so this smart contract system that you can um, deploy to protect any any smart contract that's um, working and it's uh, in fact deployed in the context of this game um, on Gnosis chain. Um, but the, our main focus, this um, what we call, what I call rolling shutter, um, so the roll-up implementation isn't isn't live yet, um, but should be coming out very soon. So we actually haven't announced it yet, so this is a sneak peek here. So we'll announce it maybe today or uh, coming days. So yeah, but it's also we're quite far in the development, so it's also going to be released uh, quite soon. Yeah. And then, who where are we collaborating with? So yeah, we're exploring with all the all the major ORs, and then also talking to some of the side chains. So so Gnosis chain, for example, because yeah, but only ORs. Or for now, for now ORs because again there are more. Probably more quick to um, to be viable. Yeah, we've all we talked to some zk rollups in the past, but sort of for now the focus would be on ORs. Okay, and what about like uh, L1s that work with them as well? <coughs> yeah, so that's our track with the sort of publishing it to ETH Research um, forum um, and and getting feedback from from the Ethereum Foundation there and some other people. And then again, this is they're not going to um, be adopting it anytime soon. But smaller chains like Gnosis Chain, they also want to uh, create their own beacon chain, right? They are open or interested in, in, in prototyping it uh, earlier than, than Ethereum itself. Sort of, yeah. But is it easy to implement uh, rolling shutter on chain? Or like no, the, the rolling shutter is easy on the, on the, for the rollups, and then implementing it into the L1 is a much it's a more involved. Um, process and going to take longer. Okay, okay. It's interesting because we are all here, so working on like uh, launching our own chain. So maybe we we'll can try to integrate with you somehow. Awesome, yeah. And one one other path to this would be to, if it's a MVM compatible chain, is to is to have a have a rolling shutter. So have a, have a shutter MEV protected roll up on that chain as to first to so just try it out okay. and then yeah. So uh, on Gnosis there's already is uh, Optimism and Arbitrum running on those as well, so, so that's also another sort of maybe smaller step you, other chains can take to, to prototype this. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, no more questions? Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah, there is one question. <laughs> So you missed the earlier part. Uh, can you explain the mechanism in short, uh, in brief, like how exactly does it work? Yeah, so I'm, I'm not going to, uh, none of this is like too detailed, but you can read um, on, um, on our blog posts. Um, but 
So yeah, very briefly, again, transactions are encrypted um, and then batched and signed while they're still encrypted uh, and signed by the collator or validator or roll-up validator while they're still encrypted and then afterwards um, get decrypted. And then the complexity there, again, sort of the keepers that collaborate to generate the encryption key um, to, to, um, that's broadcasted, released, and then the, whoever um, submits the transaction uh, uses that, that key to encrypt, um, sends that encrypted transaction to the, to the block producer, block producer signs, um, and then keepers collaborate again to generate the decryption key, and that's used then to decrypt. And then it depends a little bit on the implementation who exactly decrypts, but yeah, either one of the keepers or we have another role called decryptors. Depends on which level we, in we integrate it. Does that help the question? Yeah. Uh, I have a question about the Claro's integration. How would a uh, dispute resolution layer uh, work exactly in this uh, regard? Like, how how would it look like? Same same as before. J just that you don't see the uh, that you don't see what the current tally. Uh, so you would just say, you just submit your vote, and you, and o and only um, after the the voting period is over, it, w it would be released. Okay. Thank you. So it seems that no questions for now. No more questions. So we're going to let you go finally. Thank you very much for your talk. You. Yeah, very interesting technologies you're working on. <laughs>